Good morning. My name is Jeannie Woodford, and I want to replace California's death penalty to protect public safety. Speaking for Safe California, I want to inform you that late Friday afternoon, we submitted the Safe California Act to the Attorney General right here for title and summary. As a former warden of San Quentin State Prison, I know how the death penalty system works, and more importantly, how it doesn't work. As warden, I carried out four executions, and I vividly recall my staff asking, did we make the world safer tonight? We all knew that the answer was no. I'm not the only person in law enforcement that thinks this way. In your packets today is a letter signed by over 100 current and former law enforcement officials, prosecutors, judges, and corrections officers. Each one of them signed in support of replacing the death penalty with an effective alternative. And that effective alternative is life in prison without the possibility of parole. The Safe California Act goes even further than that. It mandates that death row inmates work while they remain behind bars forever. Did you know that only 1% of them work today? Safe California mandates that inmates help victims' family by paying restitution into a victim's compensation fund. In the current system, they spend all their time in special housing, waiting for their next court appeal, often for 20 years or more. Our system is broken, and everyone knows that. I know it only too well. Since we reinstated the death penalty in California 33 years ago, we have spent $4 billion, and I want to repeat that, $4 billion to execute 13 people. California's death penalty cost $184 million more per year than if we had a system of life without the possibility of parole. That money could be better spent to really making our neighborhoods and our communities and our state safer. And here to talk about that is one of the 104 law enforcement officials who signed the letter, one of our great criminal justice prosecutors, Gil Garcetti. Good morning. It is time. It is time to replace California's dysfunctional and horribly costly death penalty. The death penalty in California is broken and it is unfixable. From the moment the district attorney decides to seek the death penalty in a particular case, he or she knows that that decision will cost taxpayers millions of dollars more than if he or she had decided to seek a sentence of life without the possibility of parole instead of the death penalty. But the DA knows, too, that even if sentenced to death, the grieving family of the murdered victim will probably never, ever see closure with an execution. It is more likely that the convicted murderer will die in prison before execution is imposed. Every year, however, for years and years to come, the families and close friends of the victims will be tormented, knowing that the murderer grows older, but that murderer is seemingly no closer to execution. We should put a stop to that torment. The Safe California Act does exactly that. The Safe California Safety Act does more than keep all these murders in prison for the rest of their life. How many of our citizens know that 46%, sorry, over here, how many people know of our citizens know that 46% of all murders and 56% of all rapes in the average year in our state go unsolved. Why? In good part, it is because our law enforcement agencies simply do not have the resources necessary to help solve those crimes. The State California Act takes $30 million saved per year 
those $30 million every year for the next three years and puts it into a special fund that will be used to solve more murder and rape cases. It will keep our families safer today. California's death penalty does not and cannot function the way supporters wanted it to function. I was one of them. The money, the millions and millions and millions of dollars spent prosecuting, defending, housing, and handling the unique legal reviews required for every death penalty case would be far better spent keeping our kids in school, keeping our teachers and counselors in their schools, and working to solve murder and rape cases. The Safe California Act is a proposal whose time has come, and I am pleased to join the people that you see behind me and the thousands more throughout the state who want to support this measure. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. Now I'd like to bring forward Mr. Heller, who was the original author of the voter initiative to restore the California death penalty in 1978. Good morning. I'm Don Heller. I wrote the death penalty initiative for Senator Briggs in 1977. It was passed in November 1978, and it's a well-drafted document, except it doesn't work. It's flawed because the process has become so incredibly expensive that uh, it cannot be remedied by any legitimate means. It uh, is draining our fist by billions of dollars, and it will continue to drain much needed resources for law enforcement, and the protection of society, public safety, is the primary goal of law enforcement. Unless capital punishment is abolished, it will continue to drain our, but our um, state fist to a point where we are losing the resources to protect society. I wrote it. In 1977, at the time it was written, no one ever considered the fiscal impact of capital punishment. No one ever thought about the number of people that would end up being convicted under the, um, under the initiative. We have over 700 people on death row. It takes 20 to 25 years to carry out an execution. A good number of those cases get reversed. Uh, or have been reversed in the past. We're spending a huge amount of money on elements that would not occur if the punishment was life without possibility of parole. Life without possibility of parole gives the defendant an opportunity for a fair trial, and if he's convicted, it locks him up for the rest of his or her life without possibility of parole. Parole is not an option. It protects society from that person, resources that would have been spent on his capital or her capital case now could be spent on public safety to protect the public. I support this initiative. I think it is, is the right thing to do at the right time. We are now in one of the most horrific budget crises in the history of the state and the history of this country. Now is the time to act. Let me just take, say two things. It doesn't cut anyone loose from prison. It keeps them in prison for the rest of their lives. It reduces the state's cost of maintaining them in, in, on death row because they will go into the, into the general population. They will not get all the benefits that they're getting now on death row. It's, I find it amazing that people on death row have more benefits than people in the general population an oxymoronic, but that's what occurs. So we protect public safety and we save precious resources for other more, other more important purposes. Thank you very much. And now it's an honor to introduce Gloria Killian. Uh, Gloria spent 16 years inside our state prison here in California. 
um, to be exonerated, and so she represents the growing number of exonerees. Gloria? Thanks. Good morning. I was arrested and charged with the death penalty for a crime that I did not commit. After four and a half months, that case was dismissed because there was no evidence against me. But one of the perpetrators went to trial. And the day that he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, he was horrified by that sentence. He went back to the jail, picked up the phone, called the sheriff's department, and said, I can help you. They recalled his sentence. He was unsentenced for three and a half years. They helped him to come up with the story. And once again, when I was rearrested, I was again charged with the death penalty. If it was not for a change in California law that occurred almost a year later, I would have been sentenced to death when I was convicted. The issue is that there are so many people like me, and the fact is that when I was able to obtain the evidence and to get good lawyers, I was alive to be exonerated because I could have been executed previously. There are lots of people like me all over the United States, and especially in California. There are innocent women on death row right now. We do not get it right often enough that we can take that chance. If a person is sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, at least they are alive when there is an opportunity to be exonerated. And there are thousands of people that have been exonerated in the past 10 years in this country. We can't take the chance of executing one more innocent person. And now I'd like to introduce Judy Kerr. Her brother Robert was murdered. The killer is still at large. Good morning. My name is Judy Kerr and I join in a broad-based coalition of people across California who want to replace California's death penalty to help murder victim family members. When my brother Bob was murdered in 2003, I hoped, I hoped that justice would be certain and swift. Today, like thousands of other murder victim families across our state, I wait for Bob's killer to be identified, charged, and convicted and removed from our streets so that he can never hurt anyone again. I wait because I'm a murder victim family member. There are tens of thousands of us, like me, we wait in line for justice while our broken death penalty system is on track to waste one billion on a hot few, a few high profile killers. Killers who are already safely behind bars. We wait while every county in our financially struggling state is forced into choosing to lay off police officers and prosecutors and to eliminate victim services. That's not what I want. What I want is for the hundreds of millions that we could save by replacing the death penalty to be redirected to public safety for my family and for yours. That's why today I also speak as a representative of California crime victims for alternatives to the death penalty. We come to this issue from a diverse range of views. Some family members think the death penalty is too easy for the monster that killed their loved one. Some don't want to be dragged through years and years of appeals only to watch a murderer die of natural causes on death row. And some of our supporters have watched an execution of the monster that killed their loved one, only to realize after the execution that they were no closer to healing and no closer to any concept of closure. We all agree that the death penalty is harmful to victims. We are all ready to turn away from a system that wastes tax dollars while killers roam free. I know the high price of the death penalty because my brother paid it and I'm still paying it. Murder victim family members have not had a chance to weigh in on the death penalty for 33 years. It's time. <laughs> 